like your name reaches the ends of the earth. Your In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a joy and a blessing to celebrate this Mass on this, the Feast of the Presentation of our Lord, and on this 25th day of uh, world prayer for consecrated life. I welcome the few who are here at our cathedral today as well as those who are at home or with their communities and watching by means of live stream. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple, in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. 
the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
21. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear consecrated brothers and sisters in the Lord, as I said, it is good to be with you today, whether you are one of the few that are here at our Cathedral of St. Jude the Apostle in St. Petersburg, or one of the many who are participating by means of live stream today, as we celebrate this feast of the presentation of the Lord. I know under typical or usual circumstances, we might have the opportunity to celebrate this feast together. And we would also normally celebrate a, a Jubilee Mass for those who are celebrating special or milestone anniversaries of their religious profession. Unfortunately, due to the times and the circumstances in which we live, those things are not possible this year. But nevertheless, during this Mass, we are united in the Lord and in this Eucharist, which we celebrate today. We hear in our gospel reading, just proclaimed by our deacon, how the Holy Family, being very good and faithful Jews, wished to, prescribe, wished to fulfill the prescription of the Jewish law. And so they bring their newborn son, Jesus, to the temple to present him to be consecrated the tradition or the prescription was that they would also offer a one-year-old lamb as a burnt sacrifice, and then either a turtle dove or a pigeon as an offering. The Holy Family does so on this occasion, thus fulfilling the dictates of the law. It is also an occasion for Simeon, this man who the scriptures describe as being righteous and devout, and who was awaiting the consolation of Israel for him to receive the promise that was made to him that he would not see death until he saw the salvation of Israel in Jesus himself. So certainly a very beautiful celebration for the Holy Family, but also for us as a church. You know, the presentation is, oh, has always reminded me of something similar, though different in many ways, to, to baptism. As parents and godparents and families bring their newborn children, their infants, to the church, to our temple, and to present them to the Lord so that God may bless them, may anoint them, and may embrace them as his own children. 
We also recall our own baptism, I think, on this day today as well. We also celebrate, as I mentioned, this 25th day of world prayer for consecrated life. And what a beautiful day it is to celebrate this particular reality. One of the traditions on this day, which is also known as Candlemas, is for the faithful and for parishes, for churches, to present the candles during this Mass or as part of this liturgy, to be blessed, these candles which will either be used in the church during the coming year or will be taken home and used in homes throughout the coming year. The candles are blessed and then they are lit during the different celebrations. Of course, the candle represents the light of Jesus Christ, who pierces the darkness of sin and of death. And you, as consecrated men and women, are also that light in our world today, in the shadows of despair for those who lack hope or meaning in their life. You bring that light of Christ to them through the witness of your life by living the evangelical counsels that you profess and through the various ministries and apostolates in which you are engaged. I thank you for your witness on this day and for your many, many years of de dedicated and devoted service and ministry to the faithful of our diocese here in St. Petersburg and in all the various communities and dioceses in which you have served during your ministry. On a particular day when you made your solemn profession of your final vows, in a certain sense, also on that day, you presented yourself before the Lord to be consecrated to him, to give your entire being, body, soul, and spirit to God for his service and out of love for his people. Again, that's what we celebrate today. And I have a great deal of gratitude to you for your witness and for your selfless love. There are two particular groups that I do want to recognize today during this Mass. First of all, I would like to, to recognize those who, as I said, are celebrating special anniversaries this year, whether it be maybe just one year of profession or possibly 10, 20, 25, 50 years or more. Again, we honor you today during this Mass, and we thank you for the gift of your vocation. My Mass intention today is offered for you uh, and for, in thanksgiving and gratitude for you and for God's continued blessing upon you. And then also during this liturgy today, I think it would be appropriate for us to remember the many consecrated men and women who we have lost during this past year, and in a special and particular way, those that have died because of COVID or complications of COVID. We now entrust their souls to the Lord's love and mercy, and we pray that he may embrace them in the joy and the peace of heaven. And I also remember and offer this mass for them today as well. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. As we continue in this liturgy, and as we go forth day by day in our lives, may we be the light of Christ in a world which desperately needs hope which desperately calls out for meaning. May we be that light, that presence of Jesus Christ for all those whom we encounter on our journey. Amen.
my dear friends, let us now bring to God our needs and the needs of the world, confident that God will hear us. Our response will be, gracious God, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop, Gregory Parks, and all in church leadership, may they ever reflect the word of God to those in their care, we pray. Gracious, Gracious God, hear our prayer. For consecrated religious, our communities, families, and friends, and all who support and encourage us, may we be led to deep dimensions of God's love, we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For all who are called to consecrated life, may we choose daily to live with passion and joy the gospel of life we have professed, we pray. God, hear our prayer. For those discerning a church vocation, may the joy and fidelity of our lives inspire them to make a lifetime commitment to God and to the church, we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For those who have been affected by the pandemic, for the sick, those who are caregivers, for those who have lost their lives, and for those who mourn, may God give healing and hope to our world, we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. In gratitude for all that God has given us and for openness to all that God asks of us, we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear the prayers of those who have consecrated their lives to your service and give us the grace to follow you all the days. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your son and our brother, amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may the offering made with exultation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you willed that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace. But on the of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, we told this peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, we told this peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, we told this peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Just before the final blessing, I would like to extend some words of gratitude to Sister Lucia, who was our reader today at Mass. Sister, thank you for joining us and thank you for your humble ministry today. And also to our organist and cantor, Joe Mabini-Green, uh, for providing us with beautiful music uh, to accompany our prayer and worship during this Mass today. Uh, thank you so very, very much for your ministry as well. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.